Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Carl's Path. So the last place we left off, we were in Carl's basement with him. Chase thought he saw a big old spider. It was probably one of those little creatures because we saw that in one of the previous paths. It was like skulking down there in Carl's basement. Oh, he's got some weird things living in his house. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes and let's go. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> My eyes open slowly. <gasps> Carl's room. How mysterious. The pressure in my head tells me I didn't get nearly enough sleep. Not really surprised considering we were both up until three, and our own ghost adventure a few hours later didn't help things. I hear the doorbell and realize that that's what, I, that that's what had woken me up. Groaning, I reach under my pillow and feel around for a few seconds before I find my phone. The lump that is Carl under the blankets near my feet doesn't even budge. That was the cool thing about having Carl as a roommate. He slept like a fucking rock. I did pretty much anything I wanted to, and I didn't have to worry about him reporting me to the RA, even something like jerking off. That only happened a few times, though. The rabbit I'm rooming with now is a different story. Again, the doorbell. I glance at my phone. 10 a.m. I also notice I have five texts and two calls. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's a cool animation. Hey! Sorry, hey. On the way to Carl's house for a surprise party. Make sure you're ready. Hello? Look, the reverse of a surprise party. <laughs> I look down and then nudge, nudge some part of Carl on my foot. Judging by the thickness and consistency, I'm pretty sure it's his ass. He grunts. <laughs> what? I think someone's at the door? He doesn't say anything, and a few seconds later, his guttural snores start up again. This time, I really dig my foot in, and he yelps loudly, sitting up so fast his horns bang against the wall. He squints against the sunlight, pouring in between the blinds, which turns his emerald eyes into an almost mint green. He raises up a paw to block the light and looks at me, frowning. What the hell was that? The doorbell goes off again. Door! Carl blinks at me, then slumps back down on his pillow, waving a paw lazily in the air. Let it ring. I'll go away eventually. Huh? Are, are you sure? He flops his paw around again. Solicitor, trust me. It's in his house and make a beeline. No one else visits. I sigh, looking back down at my phone. Oh look, Leo texted me. That's probably him at the door. I guess my tone of surprise was a little too fake because Carl sits up and eyes me suspiciously. Well, you can go ahead and answer it. You're allowed to touch my door. I sigh a little harder this time. Damn it, Carl, fine. They're planning a surprise birthday party for you, so go down there. Answer the door and act surprised. What? But Carl's not just confused. He looks genuinely upset. He leans into the corner and pulls up the blanket like he's preparing to ward off the boogeyman. My birthday isn't until next month. I pause, watching him. I know, but we didn't have much to do, so Leo thought... I slide off the bed and start pulling on my jeans and a shirt. Come on, I'll go down with you. Carl covers his face and rubs hard, and the short fur on his muzzle bristling out in little spikes around his fingers. I just I wanted to relax today, you know? Isn't that every day for you? I, la I laugh to lighten the jab, but Carl just frowns. Well, not with you. I'm starting to wonder if all of this isolation has worsened Carl's issues, if he really has gotten the help he needs. That all this hiding out has just blanketed the problem and let it fester underneath. If we can relax, we're all friends here, Carl. Come on. I pick up his clothes left on the floor from yesterday and toss them at him. I'm at least a little relieved to see him putting them on, even if it's reluctant. My phone buzzes a few more times, but I ignore it and potentially wait for Carl to finish getting dressed. I think this will be a lot of fun. He doesn't say anything as he slowly ro rolls off the bed and, pull and pulls on his shorts. Surprise! Happy not really your birthday, bitch! As I open the door, a blast of confetti hits my face along with a loud pop that leaves my ears ringing. TJ, not in the face! S sorry I suddenly pull the papery strings of confetti off from around my ears as the smell of fireworks stings my nose. Where the fuck's Carl? I look behind me and step over to the side a bit, revealing Carl who's got his arms folded tightly, head dipped. Good thing I didn't answer the door, huh? Happy birthday! Leo bustles in, carrying two bags. Jenna follows, carrying medium-sized cylindrical cake covered in white frosting. Carl perks a bit when he sees this, his long ears bouncing. Hey, is that red velvet? Yeah, Flynn says it's your favorite. Store made, though. I would have ate it myself if Leo had warned us in advance. Hey, I just came up with this, like, two days ago. Flynn engages Carl with some fake punches while Leo sets the bags down on the table before turning to me with his voice low. Just so you know, your gift is a horn band. Okay, so is everything alright with, with Flynn, I mean? 
Leo glances over at the lizard, corking the corner of his mouth up towards his ear. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It will take a bit of time for him to settle down, but he already sort of apologized when we were gone. So that's a start at least, yeah? I exhale. Okay. Carl, where are your plates? The, uh, the, the cupboard, second door over. Now that Flynn is not shoving him around, Carl's hands, Carl's standing by awkwardly next to the table, paws fidgeting. So, why are we doing this? It's not until next month. Leo shrugs, frowning. We just wanted to do something, really. I mean, there's not much to do, you know. You have candles anywhere, Carl? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. What's up, man? Haven't you had your morning joint yet? Lighten up. Flynn snatches up one of Carl's horns and wobbles his head around. Well, it's something Flynn did to Carl a lot. The taboo act of grabbing someone's horn almost makes me gasp out loud. So stop! Carl shoves Flynn off and smooths his beanie down. Well, I guess we'll have to skip the candles. I told you we would have. We should have brought some, Leo. Leo, thr Leo throws his arms out and shrug. What? Assume if I thought they'd have everything we'd need in this mansion. No kidding. You know how places you haven't been to since you were little look smaller when you visit as an adult? Teacher's eyes scan the tall ceiling. This place still looks giant. <laughs> sure, Teej. Carl huffs out of breath. Why didn't you guys tell me? I still need to take a shower. Quit being a pussy. You smell. You always smell like a skunk. Now eat some cake. Flynn grabs up the knife while Jenna sets out the plates. The frosting is so thick it practically absorbs the knife. I haven't had cake for breakfast since like your last birthday party, Carl. Carl doesn't say anything. Instead, sitting at the end of the table, paws in his pockets. You guys sure slept in. What were you all doing? What were you all doing all night? I wait to see if Carl is going to say anything. When he, it's clear he isn't. I chime in. Video games mostly, and a movie. Fun, fun. It's something we could have all done together, though. It may, <clears throat> maybe for people who don't have a job and to go to the next day. I don't think that was a personal dig at Carl, but I don't miss the downward flick of his ears. Flynn plops down a thick slice of cake onto Carl's plate. The inch deep frosting making a splatting sound. Hey, maybe we should just stick a doobie in there and light it, huh? Carl, who had perked up at the sight of the cake, shrinks back down with a frown. It's just a small slice, please. Flynn eyes TJ, who's holding out his plate and positions the knife. S smaller, please. Oh my god, loosen up, you're on vacation. Flynn starts cutting the slice even bigger than Carl's was. Hey! Flynn. He says it quietly, but the chill in her voice is clear, and so is the fact that things aren't completely okay. Flynn grunts, then cuts the cake again, this time with a slice that's just an inch wide. That good? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. TJ moves away to sit down, and the warm glow of our little get-together chills, but Leo chips in with a laugh. Make sure Chase gets a real big chunk. He's got a way... he's gotten way too skinny. I don't argue, and Flynn slaps down a large slice on my plate, a little notch in the center where he tried to cut TJ's. I sit in the vacant seat next to Carl, where he's resting a cheek on the, in his pillow, methodically shoveling the cake into his maw. Everything okay? Hmm? Oh, yeah, everything's good. I'm about to ask more, but Flynn points across the table at us. Hey, Leo, want to tell them about what we saw on the way here? Oh, God, no. I look at Leo inquisitively, and even Carl's ears perk up a little bit. What? Leo purses his lips like he's trying to decide whether or not to tell us. Now might not be the best time. Flynn rolls his eyes. Screw it. You know Janice? The waitress? Yeah, the meth out one at the diner. Come on, Flynn. Well, anyway, we're driving up Main Street toward the field, you know, with rusted barbed wire and stuff. TJ's hiding his face with a pause. He stares down hard at his cake. Uh-huh. Well, when he turned around the bend, we saw Janice. He keeps pausing for effect, and it's getting annoying. Okay, well, what happened? Well, she was all, all crouched over, staring at the road, and Leo starts driving up to her. I thought she was having, like, a heart attack or something. Yeah, well, as we got closer, we saw that her pants were down. I recall a little, not having expected that at all. What? Yeah, when we pulled up next to her, she just grinned at us, and then... Flynn snorts out a laugh, covering his face like he still can't believe what happened. Can we please not talk about this? It just makes me feel awful. What? Well, uh, she, uh... It's unusual to see Flynn at a loss for words. Well, she just started... pissing. What? Uh, why? I don't know, she just smiled at us and started pissing. Heard it first, and looked like looked down and saw it, then Leo hit the gas. Flynn sits back, done with his story, not exactly looking pleased with himself. I furrow my brow in confusion. Janice? She was one of the more well-adjusted people living in this town. Leo lets out a cough into the awkward silence. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly happened, like maybe we're missing something. 
Either way, she seemed fine a few days ago. Well, now I have one more reason to never go into that diner again. We sit there awkwardly. I notice Carl is still staring down at his, at his now empty plate. I still can't figure out why Carl's being so quiet, but I see an opportunity to get him to talk. And, to change the subject... Hey, didn't we have some weird stuff happen, Carl? Carl looks up at me. Huh? You know, the sounds we were hearing. Oh, yeah. What kind of sounds? Like bumping sounds and voices. That sounds creepy. Yeah, and Carl just charged down there like he wasn't even scared. It seems dangerous. Carl finally gives a little smile. <laughs> well, having a hard head can make you act crazy sometimes. So, did you find anything? No, we're not sure what it was. I'd watch out. Sounds like you got a pair of hobos banging out in your basement. <laughs> As we eat, Jenna leans over and starts pulling out presents from one of the bags. Sorry, Carl, we didn't even have time to wrap up, wrap these up. It's fine. She pulls out a comic book from, from TJ, a poster from Leo, and a manga from herself. I know you hate these things, but I think you should give it a chance. I'll take a look, thanks. And then this horn band from Chase. She pulls out an orange and black band from the bag. The colors of my the colors of my school, Carl's former school. Oh. He seems to be struggling to find something to say. Thanks. I, I didn't know people still wore these. Leo suddenly shifts against the counter, realizing that he had to explain my present. Well, they're making a comeback. We saw a couple rams and then a stag that had like five of them on. Carl glances at me, and I can tell he probably knows I didn't get it for him, mainly because of the university logo, and also because we'd made fun of them together a few years ago about how broy they were. I don't know if I should feel embarrassed or not, but my cheeks burn anyway. I promised myself to get him something thoughtful the next time we go into Peyton. Yeah, well, here's mine. Flynn reaches into his small Flynn reaches into his small pocket and pulls out something small hidden in his paw. He hands it to Carl, who looks confused for a second before the expression turns into one of interest. Wow! It's a small metal rectangular box with two sharp points jutting out from the top. I lean in for a closer look and realize those parts are horns and there's a complex, elegant design of a ram's face etched onto the front of the box. Carl presses a thumb against one of the horns and pushes. The top flicks open and over and that's when I realize it's a lighter. Saw it when I was over there on the reservation. Made me think of you. He reaches out and traces a finger along the horns and clicks it back shut. Huh, <laughs> thanks, Flynn. Yeah, now you look like a badass when you decide to get blazed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry! We all jump and look over at TJ, who's looking at the floor, his plate gone from the table. Flynn starts to laugh, but catches himself. Don't worry about it, they're probably, they probably got a hundred of those plates. Carl, where's your broom? He doesn't say anything, and we, look, and, we, and we look at where Carl had been sitting a few seconds ago. But he's gone, and so is another portion of the cake. Huh, where'd he go? Carl's awfully fast. Stealthy, too. Kind of odd. <laughs> hey, check between the wall and the fridge. I think that's where I remember seeing it. JJ gets down on his knees and starts picking up the larger pieces. I look back at Carl's spot, then up the stairs. I'll be right back. Bathroom. I'm not sure why the deck is in the... the I'm not sure why the deck is the first place I look, but it's where I find him. I watch him through the paneled curtains for a moment. He's sitting on a little swing set, facing out towards the glaringly bright desert. There's an empty plate with a fork on it next to him. He is also towing the lighter Flynn gave him, flipping it open and closed a few times and holding it up to the light. Smoke wafts up from his lap where I assume he's holding a joint. Quietly, I slide open the glass door and step out onto the wooden balcony. The deck is, of course, nice and big, stretching around half the house. I see Carl's long ears twitch at the sound and he, blow and he lowers the lighter, the lighter down into his lap, but doesn't turn around. Hey! He does turn around, then, and smiles. Shit! <laughs> I thought you were with Leo. I thought you were Leo or something. Would that have been a bad thing? I look around and just decide to sit next to him on the swing. He'd just have pulled me back to the party. I look over at him. He's looking down at his lighter, turning it over in his paws, the hoof portions of his fingers making clanking, making clacking sounds against the metal. Those things always fascinated me. It seemed like it should make holding things more difficult, but he managed just fine. Are you okay? Carl huffs out a chuckle and leans his head back against the cushioned backing of the seat. That's a great question. Everyone's always asking me. You just seem really uptight is all. Carl's demeanor is a lot more relaxed now, obviously. As if to emphasize that thought, he takes another hit off his joint and holds his breath for a moment, then lets it out. The pungent smell envelops me. I just don't like being around so many people, you know that. Well, yeah, but you were fine around or, but you were fine around them these past few days. Carl rubs his forehead hard with the paw holding the joint, using his palm. 
Yeah, well, things things weren't about me then. Just felt a little bit put on the spot. He coughs. That shit just got me nervous. Like, can't we just hang out and not make it about me? I don't say anything. Annoyed again that I just can't grasp what he means. Am I making you nervous? Carl finally does look at me, and his massive horns sway towards me. No, you never do, Chase. I do look away at that point, almost feeling self-conscious at the way he opened up to me. And thanks for trying to get me to talk earlier. Just makes me feel guilty, though, the way people try to include me in things, and then I just disappoint them. I was like, guys, repositioning myself. There we go. <clears throat> okay. But you just don't really force me into shit. Everyone feels like I need to do something. Why can't I just decide that for myself? I push against the ground, making the swing sway a little, trying to think of the right thing to say. I mean, it's good to do stuff, right? You can't just sit around doing nothing forever. I guess. It's just that I, I worry enough about myself. I don't need other people doing it for me. I lean back in the swing for a bit, looking out over the desert. Man, I'm hungry. Wish I brought more cake with me. Not enough incentive to go back in? Not yet. I could go get you some. He smirks at me. You're one of those fat fetishes just feeding me garbage so my moobs get bigger? You don't have moobs. I've felt them. Yeah, I can't keep your paws off me. You have a thing for my fat ass? I look him over as if studying his figure. Hmm. Hey! He covers his chest. <laughs> well, I do actually like bigger guys, and there's nothing wrong with extra weight, especially if it's carried well. He looks at me expectantly. What you do? Sweet! You know, you seem like you'd be a pretty dope boyfriend. Just feed me cake all day and then get off on the results. I'm about to shoot back with something snarky when a stumbling figure catches my eye. Out on the sun-baked asphalt of the road in front of Carl's house, I see a thin figure, a weasel, I think, running up the road. He stops, panting, paws on his knees before he looks over his shoulder again. His whole body slumps in, like the air's gone out of him, like he's giving up on something. He turns around to look back up the road. He's far away, but even from where I can tell, from where I can tell that, but even from here, I can tell that he's talking. Carl looks over at my silence, then down at the road where I'm looking. Hmm. Is that is that Duke? Yeah, that's him. Must be on something. He usually is. Duke finally turns around and starts to cower, his paws up in surrender. His lips are still moving rapidly, reminding me of someone who's trying to say as much as they can before something cuts them off. What do you think? I trail off as Duke suddenly whips his head around and looks up at us and starts pointing up at our balcony. Uh-oh. Let's hope the doors are locked. Carl's chuckling, obviously finding the whole thing hilarious, but I'm a bit more on edge. I don't really feel like he's high. Duke's movements are a lot more focused, more precise, like he's all there. And for some reason, it feels like he's looking directly at me. I furrow my brow, watching as the weasel turns toward us, sticking a foot out to take a step. The sound of the sliding glass door wrenching open nearly makes me jump out of my skin. What the hell are you guys doing? Jenna marches around and swing around the swing set to stand in front of us, paws on her hips. Whoa, what, what's up, Jenna? Carl leans, back in, Carl leans back in the swing, elbows over the back, smiling. The fox's eyes narrow as she sees the joint. Did you forget who this party was for? Carl shrugs and rubs his forehead again. <laughs> Leo, I'm guessing. No, we spent all day yesterday getting this ready for you. Leo, especially. Now get back downstairs and have your party. Carl sits quietly for a moment, then glances at me. No. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. He's not, he's not smiling anymore. His face expressionless. Head turned back towards Jenna, but his eyes are wandering off towards the side, looking at the sky. Why not? Because I don't- because I didn't fucking ask for it! I pretend to look at my phone. What, a party? I'm sorry, we were trying to be thoughtful, Carl. Maybe we should just forget you next time, huh? Jenna, it's okay, we're just hanging out. She ignores me. I see the skin inside Carl's ears and around his nose turning red. Since he was a kid, Carl didn't deal with conflict. Didn't deal well with conflict, usually running away the first chance he got. No, this was for Leo. I still understand why we couldn't do something that didn't involve... Sorry, Carl, but that's life. Sometimes you have to come out of your own room. Sometimes you have to be the center of attention, and sometimes, God forbid, you have to talk to people. Well, what if I just want to stay up here and hide? Who gives a fuck? The look on Jenna's face is approaching contempt. Are you kidding me? This is difficult for you? Jenna? Again, she ignores me. I might as well be talking to a statue, or maybe I'm just the statue that she isn't paying attention to. I feel like something must have happened downstairs. This isn't like her. You never realize how good you have it, Carl. If you even had a taste of what I went through... I can practically feel the heat radiating off of Carl's body. He looks down at his lap. Are you blaming me for that? His voice breaks. We, we all well, we all have our problems. 
Some easier than others. Carl glares at her, trying to be angry, but I can tell it's not working. You don't know what kind of shit I have to deal with. Like being rich? No, it's like myself. Oh, how terrible. The one thing you have full control over. No, it's, it's not... That's so fucking unfair. The quiver in Carl's voice doesn't exactly sound convincing, and the pot doesn't seem to be helping as I can see his fingers shaking. Just like life. Carl's face is bewildered. What the fuck did I do, Jenna? Did I say something wrong earlier? Out of habit, he lifts the joint to his muzzle with his shaking fingers, but then flinches as Jenna steps forward. I guess he thought she was going to slap him or something, but instead she just reaches forward and plucks the joint from his grasp, right before flicking it back into his face. It hits his nose and Carl flinches again. Without a word, Jenna spins on her heel and opens the door even harder than she did the first time. I'm stunned. I haven't seen Jenna that angry since she was in middle school and definitely never at Carl. Carl doesn't say anything, instead rubbing at his nose, leaning back in his seat. The insides of his ears are still flushed to deep red. What the fuck was that? I don't know. Something must have happened. That wasn't Jenna. I'll ask Leo about it later. I didn't do anything, did I? I shrug. No words coming to mind. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. Ooh. Yeah, a little bit of a confrontation between Carl and Jenna. And something's going on with Duke. Ah. Ay -ay -ay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next uh, next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!